God, praise God. Uh, saving grace, we are a house full of testimonies. Today we have another testimony giver, and her name is Julie. So why don't we put our hands together for Julie? Come on out, Julie. Woo! My name is Julie, and uh, I remember sharing my testimony last year right around this time, and I can't believe that a year has already passed. Uh, so let me just start my testimony with prayer. Uh, Lord Jesus, I thank you for your faithfulness and your patience in my life. You are worthy of all the glory and honor and praise. Would you open my lips that, I, that my mouth may praise you and you alone? In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So most of you would already know me, but for those of you who don't, my name is Julie. And just to share a little bit of my background, I was born in Korea and grew up in a Christian family. Both my dad and my mom are Christians, and I have three older siblings, including my twin sister Nancy, who is 60 seconds older than me. Um, so my testimony today is composed of two parts. Part one, pre-saving grace. And part two, post-saving grace. And part two will be more interesting because I believe in post-trip. <laughs> uh, through this testimony, I pray that the goodness and steadfast love of God will be proclaimed and that God may be glorified and all of us will be edified and love him more. So part one, pre-saving grace. That is my life until mid-2021. And I'll focus on my life in Israel because I didn't get to share much about it in my previous testimony. So how the Lord has brought me to Israel, it was during my sophomore year in college. One day, my aunt gave me a prayer book for the nation of Israel. I had zero interest in the Middle East back then. And I didn't know why I should pray for a nation that is so far from me. But without much thinking, I started reading out the prayer points for Israel. And as I continued to pray for Israel, the Lord opened the door for me to visit Israel during my junior year in college. I went there with a group of believers whom I had never met before. And it was a 12-day trip traveling around the country, visiting Jerusalem, the Sea of Galilee, uh, Bethlehem and other cities that appeared in the Bible. I remember one night near the Sea of Galilee where a man in the tour group shared an insight he got from the book of Genesis. The man had speech impairments, so it was very difficult for him to articulate his words. But what he said was so profound. He was saying to me that the, the entire Old Testament was pointing to Jesus Christ. He referred to Genesis 3.21 particularly, what it's, uh, where it says, And the Lord God made for Adam and for his wife garments of skins and clothed them. And he paused for a moment and he said, It foreshadowed the sacrificial death of, death of Christ, whom God sent to save us from eternal separation and clothe us with his righteousness. After listening to his word, I couldn't stop meditating on the phrase garments of skin. He said it in Korean, and that word kajuk ot stuck with me throughout the day. It came back to me during the worship time that evening, and while singing worship songs, suddenly I felt a strong presence of the Lord, and I found myself crying uncontrollably for half an hour. While crying, I felt indescribable peace within me and realized that it was the Holy Spirit um, who was revealing to me who Jesus was through the scripture. The love of Christ and his sacrificial death was no longer a statement or a line of texts. It was a person, the man who was in the form of God, who came down from heaven to earth in the likeness of men. Growing up in a Christian family, until then, I couldn't fully understand the concept of the Messiah and my need for him. Growing up, I was proclaiming and memorizing the Bible, but still my sinful nature was rejecting the very idea of someone having to die for me for my sin because I believed in my sinful nature that I didn't commit any grave sin. But on that night, 
um, I, I encountered the Lord Jesus, and I felt like I had a glimpse of what it would be like worshiping Jesus in heaven. After my trip to Israel, the Lord put a strong desire in me to go back to Israel and study there. So graduating from my university, I flew to Jerusalem and began my studies there. Being in that land made, me, made my devotion much more dynamic. While reading about Jesus, teaching at synagogues, I would realize that Jesus, whom I was reading about in the Bible, actually lived here in this land 2,000 years ago. In Jerusalem, most of my classmates were Jewish, and they came to Israel to find their roots. It was an interesting environment to live in, living with Jews and Muslims. So I could have been swayed uh, by different belief systems, but the Lord graciously allowed me to meet many missionaries and pilgrims from all over the world and expanded my concept of who God is, that he is the God of all nations. God led me to a community of faithful believers where the, where the only common ground was our belief, and, our belief in and love for Jesus Christ. As part of my program, I had to study the history of Jerusalem, and it brought a real paradigm shift in my life. Studying the history of Jerusalem renewed my understanding of who, uh, understanding of God who fulfills his covenant with his people. Our God is the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. This realiz realiz realization <laughs> changed not only how I read the Bible, but also how I view myself and others. I realize that I'm not the center nor the protagonist on this earth, but that I'm merely a point on a timeline in the ongoing history of restoration that God has started since the Garden of Eden. Looking at my surroundings through this lens, I realized that I was underestimating the degree of his faithfulness. Our God is faithful yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and his steadfast love endures forever. Spending three and, uh, three and a half years in Israel, I came back to Korea in April 2020 when the COVID hit. And I don't remember much what happened between 20, uh, 2020 and 2022, but one thing I do remember <laughs> is that I found saving grace. So part two, post-saving grace. That is my life with you all since April 2021. Through saving grace, the Lord is continuing his work of revealing who Jesus is and awakening me to prepare the way of his second coming. I really appreciate Pastor Paul's fervent love for the word of God and his laser focus on the end times. The proclamation of the reality, the reality about my sinful nature and the reality about Jesus coming back over and over my life <laughs> strengthened my inner man. In particular, I want to share two changes that the Lord brought to my life after I joined Saving Grace. First of all, I was so touched and convicted by non-Korean brothers and sisters here who are praying for North and South Korea so earnestly. You know, Saving Grace is multi-ethnic international church and we have literally people from every continent. And the fact that while I, while I don't actively pray for my brothers and sisters in North Korea, but Deborah from Kabul and Adolfo from Brazil were praying for North Korea and it convicted my heart. And while I don't pray out loud for local churches in my own country, Roxmai from Cambodia and Lou from Mozambique were praying for the spiritual leadership and the next generation in South Korea. The scene of internationals praying for my country made me examine my faith again and my attitude toward God and his word. Moreover, I was shocked by the fasting culture here at Saving Grace. Before coming here, I used to be scared of fasting, and I even got dizzy at the thought of fasting from food. <laughs> I used to believe firmly that I was exempt from fasting, and it was optional. The best I could do for fasting until I came here was liquid fasting. So technically, I could make everything into liquid, so it can't be regarded <laughs> as fasting. But I met here at least four to five people where fasting was part of their lifestyle. 
In difficult times, people gathered and signed up for fasting um, chain or chain fasting and praying for one another voluntarily. Surrounded with people who love the Lord with all their heart, mind, and strength, I was truly challenged and motivated to follow suit. The Lord created in me a new desire to do fasting, and he got rid of my bias and unbelief. At Saving Grace, I tasted the power of fasting and praying together, and this is truly a miracle. I'm so grateful that the Lord faithfully surrounds me with his people so that I will not go astray. The Lord is my shepherd, and I will not lack anything. He leads me beside still waters, and it is he who restores my soul, and it is he who guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. I'm so excited to continue this journey with you all, and thank you for running this race with me. And I will end my testimony here. Thank you. Julie, her name is Jules. She, she's a jewel, man. She truly is a jewel of this house, man. Seriously. You know, her and Nancy, they came here uh, about, uh, about, about two years ago? Uh, about, about two years ago, right? And when they, when they came in, you know, the Lord just spoke to my heart. There are jewels right there. They're jewels. They're diamonds. Take good care of them. They're my beloved daughters, right? So I begin to fear them. I'm not, I begin to fear this these two girls. I begin to fear them. I, I couldn't even get really get close to them at first. I was I was like, you, you know, I was so close to everybody, but like to them, it took a while. You, you notice, right? I was like, you know, I was I was very distant from them. I was very careful with them because the Lord spoke to my heart. They're my beloved daughters. I'm not saying they're special. Y'all beloved daughters too, right? But that's how God spoke to me when they, when they came in. They're my beloved daughters. Take care of them. See, it's almost like he's like, I'm entrusting, I'm entrusting them to you. I felt the fear of God just come upon me. I was like, oh my goodness. Right? And I began to realize all of y'all, God brought to me. God said, I'm trusting them to you. Every one of you, right? I, I, I realized that on that day, right? But I was, it was really hard for me to approach Julie and Nancy for a while. You know, I was very careful. I was like, hey, hi, hey, hey, hey. You know, I was like, you know, right? I was like, what if I touch like lightning? You know, I was like, you know, so I was like, you know, but you know, like, so my wife had had this big idea, like, hey, you know what? We gotta bring in the Bible proclamation and things like that, right? You know, we we have Steve who who does it, who has his own channel of doing that, right? Wait, hold on, I'm just, did you start did you start a channel before Julie came to the church? Or was it after you? Two? It was before, right? Oh, that's what it was before. That's what. Oh, that's what they came through you. That's what, that's what they came through. Yeah, that's what they came through. Yeah. He's like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> okay, anyways, yeah, so anyways, yeah. So anyways, so my wife said, hey, let's get let's get Julie and Nancy to give a uh, like a, a seminar on Bible proclamation daily reading and let's make that into a church culture, right? But I've been doing it all my life, right? But not like memor I don't I don't I don't memorize scriptures. It just I mean some I do, right? But you know, but I was like, okay. So we did it and now it has become a culture. My daily reading, Bible proclamation, this is the, this is the, the, the backbone, of, of course, Christ, but this is the, the backbone of our church, man. Our church must be known for this by loving the word and proclaiming the word out loud, right? Proclaiming the word out loud, not just reading it, but out loud, amen? And, and God has used them to bring it in, and now we're, we're, we're here, and praise God. Man, yeah. So I don't have a scripture for you. Sorry about that. Right? Yeah. So, so ladies, can you please come up? And uh, let's pray for Julie.
thank you, Father God, that you are who you are and Julie is who she is because of you. Father God, thank you so much that you have <laughs> given us a chance to be able to get to know Julie. Father God, thank you for the path that you have uh, prepared for Julie and that she has been walking so faithfully on the fruitful soil of who you are. Father, uh, we pray together as sisters and brothers in Christ that Julie will continue to pursue you with holiness and that she will continue to uh, preach your word in boldness and courageousness. Father God, thank you for lending her to us for a little while so that she may be able to proclaim uh, your word to us and lead us into new types of ways of thinking about things, Lord, and pray that you will anoint her hands and her feet, that you will uh, praise your name forevermore. Thank you, Father God, and we just uh, thank you that Jesus died for her on the cross, Lord. Pray this all in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.